Hey everyone, back tuning in to uh, today's video. We're doing the CFS six months look ahead uh, for February. Now, this is the first CFS six months look ahead of the year because I didn't do it uh, last month. The main reason I didn't do it last month is that I thought basically we'd all had enough of it because this model um, has been forecasting this very mild winter that we've been enjoying or in enduring, depending on on your point of view. It was forecasting this mild winter right the way back around July and August when the first updates of this winter started coming through at the CFS website. So it has been a fantastic performance by the CFS B2. I can't fault it really in the um, forecast that it's been delivering uh, consistently over the past few months of this winter. Um, but it's all a bit of a letdown, I have to say, and uh, I know a lot of you are a bit fed up with the CFS V2. So I did give it a rest uh, last month, and of course I had some very bad news uh, last month as well, which meant that several of the updates I normally do went by uh, the wayside. But um, anyway, it's back for February, and it'll be back uh, for every uh, month this year as well. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, so uh, we're going to have a look at the next six months. It basically uh, does what it says on the team. We're going to look at the next six months weather as being predicted today um, when I'm doing the update by the CFSV2 model. So we'll look at the 700 millibar height anomalies for the next six months, and then we'll look at the corresponding temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies that go with those 500 millibar heights. Actually, they're 700 millibar heights, which is just a so different area in the atmosphere. I always like to have a bit of a laugh uh, with these updates, but to, um, just to be a bit serious for uh, the moment, as I always have to caveat with these updates, they are just for fun. Um, although the CFS V2 appears to have got this winter uh, correct from six months uh, away, um, it doesn't always work out uh, like that by any means. So you really have to take what you're seeing here with a pinch of salt. The first couple of months should have some scientific merit, but as we're going on to four, five, six months away, then it does get um, rather controversial to even be doing this, to be honest. A lot of people probably don't agree with doing a six month look head using just one model but um, the charts are there as I always say the charts are there so you might as well use them but always 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 having the uh, idea at the back of our minds that uh, we should not be taking things too seriously and it's just the phone just heads up to show what the model is showing at this point for well we're going to go to August uh, with this update so we'll be going through the spring and summer well, before I get on with that, just to say about the ads at Gasworth, it says links to articles on all the pages, so have a browser which widgets and click through the links if there are articles that you're interested in. Thanks so much for doing that. There's also video ads which will open up the content when you watch the mail close back up again. It does all help to pay for our website and it allows us at Gasworth to remain completely free. The more you engage with the ads, the more you're helping to pay for the website. So I know I do these announcements every uh, video, and I'm sure a lot of you uh, get a bit fed up with it and probably um, wish I didn't. But, but it is important because it does pay uh, for our website. So uh, please, the more you get involved with the ads, um, the more you're helping to support GavsWeatherVids.com. Uh, just say about the CFSV2 model, you can find the link to it on the links page. And uh, well, that's about it. I better get on with it. I think I've rambled on uh, for long enough. So we're going to start off with 700 bit of our high dominance for the next six months, and then we'll have a look at the current corresponding temperature and corresponding precipitation uh, anomalies as well. So we're going to start off in March, and in theory, this is the most reliable uh, point, of course, because it's only um, a couple of weeks away until we uh, get into the start of March. As you know, with height anomalies, uh, blue extrapolates to low pressure, red and orange extrapolates to high pressure, or I should say orange and red. So what we see uh, for the pattern for March is very much what we've had throughout the winter, uh, really, with a ridge of high pressure down to the south across many parts of Europe, a trough of low pressure in the Atlantic. It means the jet stream is doing something like that. It's another Atlantic-driven month, but it should be fairly mild because the way the trough in the Atlantic here and the ridge down in the southeast are orienting themselves, we should be dragging up the air from quite a mild source of the Atlantic Ocean. So this is another mild Atlantic driven month. Going inside of spring, of course, and with that 700 bit of our height, it's showing a ridge down to the south. That could be very pleasant for the south, 
Um, could really be a taste of spring uh, month for um, March. Could be an early taste of spring there. Quite a nice month indeed. Now, as we go through to April, things do look a little bit different uh, for April. We've still got this ridging down to the south, but it's, a, it's extending more out into the central part of the Atlantic and also going up towards uh, Newfoundland. And then we've got a uh, trough of low pressure running to the uh, north of the country, with the jet stream probably coming more or less through the country rather like that. And over here across Scandinavia, on this side of the chart, we do actually hint at uh, developing a bit of a trough with in the 700 millibar flow there. So I think this is a significantly cooler month that we're looking at here. Uh, it still is largely Atlantic driven, I would think, but it's certainly, the air is certainly coming from a cooler source in the Atlantic and uh, worth uh, things to line up uh, slightly differently. Were these ridges to be, uh, say, more around here? and the trough even deeper over Scandinavia, then we really could uh, find ourselves under uh, quite a deep trough of uh, low pressure sitting to the north and the northeast um, within the 700 millibar flow. That could give us quite a cold, wet, wintry uh, type April. It's not as bad as that, um, what we're looking at on, on the chart. That's just me extrapolating a little bit. It isn't as bad as that, but it is a significantly cooler and uh, also very unsettled month that we're seeing there for April. That's my interpretation of it anyway. We'll have a look at the temperature, precipitation, uh, anomalies in a moment. We go through to May and we end the spring with rather an odd looking chart. We've got a ridge of high pressure down to the southwest of the country and still through this central part of the Atlantic, trough of low pressure to the south of Greenland, some sort of trough across central Europe and a bit of a ridge up towards Scandinavia. Very hard to decide what's going on there, but I think overall it's still quite unsettled and probably still hinting at some sort of a trough within the 700 millibar flow around um, around central parts of Europe particularly, and that could affect us as well. So I'd interpret that to be generally quite a cool, unsettled looking month for May also. We move through to June, we're going uh, four months out now, so of course it's uh, going to round with being just for fun, confidence is falling. Um, June looking quite Atlantic driven, we've got uh, high pressure uh, around the Azores, low pressure around Greenland and Iceland. There is a ridge here across Scandinavia, as you tend to get quite a lot actually in uh, June, so there's a ridge there. But I think overall the uh, Atlantic flow really is the main driver here, so we're probably having another pretty unsettled month and probably quite cool again as well, because of course when you're driving the air in off the Atlantic in the summer months, completely different to when you're driving it in the winter months. In the winter months, Atlantic-driven air will be uh, mild. In the summer months, Atlantic-driven air will tend to be quite cool, really. So uh, that could be another pretty cool and unsettled-looking uh, month for the start of the summer. We go through to July, and this looks pretty grim, actually, uh, for July. We've got quite a deep trough of low pressure just to the north and west of us, a ridge here quite a long way away from us, not able to do much around the Azores. Um, again, we have got ridging up to the northeast, but that's not doing much for us either. I think the jet streams to the south of us here, this is a very poor looking chart uh, for July. Luckily it's five months away so it is only just the fun and it's nothing to be concerned about but that is a poor looking July um, with uh, the jet stream probably going a bit to the south so probably on the cool side of a jet and close to a trough of low pressure you would expect a pretty miserable uh, midsummer month. And then we end up in August and it's sort of looking very poor really for the summer for August six months away so this is uh, not to be relied upon, but for August again, a weak trough to the north and west, a ridge of high pressure a long way away from us, not able to do anything for us in the middle part of the Atlantic. Again, I think the jet stream is probably a bit to the south of us, a bit like that, so trough within the uh, 700 meter bar flow. Um, and it all just looks a bit grim, I have to say, there for the summer months. They do look pretty poor on uh, those 700 millibar high numbers. I could be interpreting them wrong, so let's see how the temperatures are stacking up. We're coming back to March, so this is the most reliable uh, period. And March uh, looking like another very mild month across not just the UK, but most of Europe. Remember what's happening 
in March is that uh, we've got high pressure sitting to the south in this sort of position and uh, here and perhaps a little bit here and then we've got low pressure up to the north around here so the jet stream is doing that it's another Atlantic driven and pretty mild month as we're going through into March with temperatures significantly above average for the start of spring. April is a very different month. You remember what we was looking at for April is that the high pressure is still around here, but it's also pulling out to be around here and going off probably up to there as well with low pressure here, here, and possibly here, possibly a low pressure within the flow across Scandinavia as a trough. So it means the jet stream is aligning rather like that. And it's a cooler month in uh, April. It's not going for a cold month, so it's not too bad, but certainly significantly cooler. All of those orange and red colours are pretty much gone. And uh, it is a cooler month that we're looking at in April. Still Atlantic driven, probably quite unsettled as well. Uh, for May, you remember May looked a bit uh, poor. It looks odd looking chart for May, but I, I interpret it to be fairly poor month. And you see the temperature normally is nothing to write home about at all. Cool of an average in most central parts of Europe. Um, so average, cool of an average really uh, is the signal for May. Uh, for June, remember this is quite an Atlantic driven month in June with the flow going a bit like that. Um, so for June, near normal temperatures, again, nothing to suggest anything particularly hot coming up as we get through into uh, June. July continues this. Again, temperatures not uh, exciting at all in terms of these temperature anomalies. I think we've got a bit of a trough within within the 700 millibar flow uh, in July. So jet stream probably going something a bit like that and there's a trough more or less centred over the top of the country. So it is a pretty grim looking signal there in July. Finally for August and things don't get any better really. The warmth uh, this summer if the CFS V2 is right, remember this is four or five, six months away, so it is very much in the unreliable uh, time frame of this long range model. But the warmth it's going for for this summer is really in the east and the northeast of Europe with uh, the west and the northwest and central parts of Europe within this cool weather. So it's cool here and then it's warm over here. Um, that's how the temperatures are looking for this summer. Uh, so after March, which is a, a significantly mild and average month, after that, the temperatures really are uh, very poor um, as we're moving through the uh, rest of the spring and into the summer. The temperature of precipitation anomalies, I should say, both were the temperature anomalies of precipitation anomalies finally. So um, March is looking uh, slightly wetter than average across many parts of the country. Again, it's an Atlantic driven uh, pattern for March with the jet stream going like that coming through many parts of Europe. So Atlantic driven, milder, but also wetter than average. We go through to April. That looks like being uh, a wetter than average month as well. Significantly wetter than average across central parts of Europe. So that does back up the idea that there could be some sort of a trough within the 700 millibar flow just here and the jet stream doing something a bit like that. So I think April could be uh, shaping up to be a fairly cool, wet type month, really. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about what we're seeing for April. For May, uh, when well, it's not as bad with the rainfall, so that's the good news. May does turn a bit drier down in the south, through the western parts of Europe. It's still a bit wet and average in the north and west. It was an odd looking chart um, for May, but improvements there with, with, with the precipitation anyway as we get to May. June, remember, we're bringing the jet stream more or less through the country, rather like that. So, um, um, well, it's a bit wetter than average, really. Uh, certainly not drier than average. The ceiling is on the wetter side of average, and with fairly coolish temperatures as well. Um, July, it gets even worse because we're centering that trough of low pressure right over top of the country, sending the jet stream to the south like that. So July uh, is a wetter than average month, and I would suspect, although the temperatures didn't show it particularly cool than average, I would suspect it would probably be cooler a wetter than average month as we go through into July. And then finally for August, the rainfall improves a little bit, but still no sign of anything significantly uh, drier than average, really. Um, a pretty unsettled uh, end to what would be a very poor summer. And of course, getting such a poor summer, 
after this exceptionally mild winter would be a real kick in the teeth, I think, for most of us. Let's hope the CFSB2, unlike its winter 15-16 forecast, which it did pin down um, from six months away, let's hope this time the CFSB2 is getting the pattern for the summer completely wrong. It certainly could be. Just because it's had this good performance for this winter doesn't mean that um, it will do it time and time and time again. It could well be that these charts that we're seeing for June, July and August are um, a long way off and it finishes up very different to what the model is showing. So uh, that's it for the CFS six months look ahead for this month. Um, it's all just for fun. I have to reiterate that not to be relied upon. The charts are there so I've had a look and seen what they're showing but don't by any means be getting too despondent, particularly about those summer charts. Uh, so that's it for the CFS 6. Let's look at for this one. We'll do it all again next month, which will take us into the start of autumn uh, next month uh, to September. Right, that's all for now. I hope you found it interesting and informative and a little bit of fun. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.